Tracy, hey girl. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Wait, okay, so I always like to come to theme, and I think you're gonna love the back of my jacket. <laughs> I love it. You I love? Did I slay? <laughs> I love it. I was like, what can I wear that's like Potomac essential oil themed? And then I'm like, oh wait, I got it. How are you? <laughs> I am great. I am great. I'm just like stress free, living my life. So my Mila Eve Essential Orders, working on Not For Lazy Moms podcast. It's it's always nonstop when it comes to the Samuels and the Samuels household. So, you know, we check something off the list, we bring on more. <laughs> slay, baby, slay. Um, you know, first of all, we have a lot of people on here. So I think a lot of people want to know what you have to say. Okay. Um, my, I have so many questions for you, and then I want to hear what you're up to. But first and foremost, I think everyone wants to know what exactly led to walking away from the show. Oh, definitely. The tip of the iceberg for me was that third part of the reunion. <laughs> I was like, this is how we're going to do it? You know? Um, I think what turned me off the most was the fact that a lot of the drama behind the scenes involved my child. That's how nasty and hateful some of these women were, that they would involve a child out. Chris and I went live after right. Candace went live. We addressed her live. So for you to add that to the reunion and not give context to why we went live and then not show her live, I was just like, you know what? This is not equal. I already felt all of the heat and pressure from the season on me. Um, I was not treated equally. There was a lot of heat in my direction, but other people who needed to be held accountable and take the heat as well, they were just given an easy little pat on the back and a little massage on the shoulder, and it was fine. So I just said, you know, what, what, am, I, what am I up against here? It's one thing to be fighting with the women on the show, but at the point where you see decisions are being made behind the scenes, and then you watch how the reunion unfolds and so much was left out that was very important um people were protected you know people who didn't deserve protection were protected and explosions and meltdowns happened that weren't shown and it really shows you the true character of some of the hate and some of the that these women had so why would you protect that you know so why wouldn't you put that out there and let people see what's really going on so since they want to protect people that don't deserve it I'm like, I've met my limit. I'm done. I don't need this. I don't have to deal with it. When you come from my family and my kids on that type of level, mm -hmm. ain't no going back from there. So yeah. it was crazy because a few days before I get offered back for season six, which I wasn't really completely expecting. I honestly thought they were going to fire me just because of the way I've been treated, you know, throughout the show and behind the scenes, even with dealing with press, trying to get booked for press. Um, I was being silenced. You know, um, so it was like my side of the story wasn't able to truly come out unless I went on social media and told it myself. So when I'm looking at the whole big picture, I was like, oh, yeah, they, they're probably going to fire me. So when they offered me to come back, I was shocked. I was like, OK, all right, well, let me go ahead and come back and redeem myself and have a great season six. And I had the intention and the hopes that they would be transparent and show what really happened for the last and final part of the reunion. Mm -hmm. And when that didn't happen. I was like, wow, why am I here exactly? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, I'm not here for the money. I'm here for the platform. I'm here to be able to take the businesses that I've been growing and to have a place for them so that other people can benefit from everything that I've been, you know, trying to make happen with my companies. So I'm like, this is just too much. You know, like the hate is real. So um, I, was, I was like, you know what? I, I don't have to deal with this. So I'm not. So... If somebody says, is Jamal coming? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> who, do you, who do you feel was protected the most? And why do you think that they were? I have no idea why they were. But who was protected the most? Definitely Candace, Giselle, um, Robin, to a certain degree. They were all protected. They, Candace went on her live and literally told everybody that there was a plot. She said verbatim, there was a plot. I was there for it. There was a conversation. She literally said it out of her own mouth at a point in time where her and I weren't cool. So why else would you? <laughs> you were never team Monique. Now all of a sudden, you spilling all kind of tea, throwing your little buddies under the bus. 
and expose this whole plot dinner, which we weren't going to talk about because how do you prove it? You know, I know it happened. Everybody knows it happened. Even behind the scenes, the execs, the network, everybody knew what was going on. So at the point where she went live, she opened up a whole can of worms and forced me and my husband to actually address it. Before that, I'm basically, you know, trying to do my part. I'm trying to make sure I show up with a smile on my face, even to the point where I'm inviting people in my home who I know are plotting behind me. But for the sake of the show, I'm doing whatever I need to do. I was team RHOP, you know? But at the point where she opened that can of worms, there was no going back from there. And once all of the truth was really put out and people could see what was really going on and things that I was even dealing with behind the scenes, they were like, wow, now this all makes sense. People watched the whole season and they could not understand where all of this energy was coming from mm -hmm. because we didn't talk about it on camera. So, right. yeah, and I don't know why they were being protected. Maybe they're looking at the majority, you know? It's like you have, you know, three or four women over here doing some low down stuff, but that's half the show, you know, yeah. how do you reprimand that. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like you and Chris feel that you were treated unfairly, which is maybe why the actual reason that you're walking away. Is that fair? We didn't feel we were treated unfairly. We were treated unfairly <laughs> without a shadow of a doubt. We were. Um, and, and if you could have heard some of the line of questioning, even that wasn't shown. I mean, it was like guns a blazing in my direction, even to the point where I'm being asked, why were, why were my kids not shown as much this season? You showed T'Challa more than you showed your kids. And I'm like, my kids filmed just as much, if not more than T'Challa. I can't choose what production decides to show. That's not on me. We I love T'Challa. Where's T'Challa? <laughs> He's upstairs. I actually, this is my new little mommy hideaway. <laughs> okay, okay. On interviews or I'm recording podcasts or anything. So Chala likes to sing in the background. To the point I was getting complaints. Some people were like, you're talking about some something so good, but I can't focus. So Chala's in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love I that. You know, I think people want to know, when is the last time you spoke to Andy Cohen? Has he reached out? Have you reached out? Have you guys kind of patch things up if you will or do you feel you're cool um i i mean i don't have anything to say uh there i mean it'd be nice if somebody would reach out to somebody in the samuels household and give us some explanation but that's not happened um the last time i talked to andy was the day after the reunion i believe um yeah i think that was the last time i talked to him after we filmed the reunion so that's been some months um uh he actually complimented me and said that you know i i did all 11 hours, didn't break a sweat. And he was proud that I was able to really hang in there for such a tough reunion. And um, that was pretty much the last parts of the conversation. And okay. yeah, no, I've not heard or uh, seen or, you know, nothing. Do you think it's possible for you to eventually return? You know, some wives take a season off, regroup, if you will, and then they come back. Is that door open for you, do you think? I'm not interested in that at all. <laughs> I okay. will be back on that show because too much has happened. And to me, if people were very genuine and if they really felt any type of remorse as they tried to hold it, hold me accountable to show remorse at a time where I wasn't ready, um, some of these ladies have done some really nasty, disgusting things. And I've not had one apology in my direction. My husband has not been apologized to. You got Giselle's pastor, Holy Whore, out here going live on his church's Facebook, spreading lies about my husband, saying that he is verbally assaulting and attacking women, which never happened. He told his church to tune into the reunion because he claimed that my husband um, assaulted Giselle and Robin and had to be subdued by security. Never happened. None of that ever happened. You're not going to paint a picture of my husband who has a very squeaky clean image, who's been in the NFL. He was in the NFL for 10 years. He's never had a scandal. He's never had any issues. He is the nicest guy you'll ever meet. And to try to spread lies about my husband, he doesn't deserve that. I definitely don't deserve it, but I'm the one that signed up for the show. So I'll take the heat if I have to take it. And then you're coming after my darn kids. Nope, I'm done. And for the network and production to allow that behavior. Why would I go back to that? So no, 
Not ever. Is there anyone from your cast that you're still talking to or that you think you could mend fences with? And if so, who? I'm sorry, say that again. Anybody from my cast? That you are still talking to and that if not, like who could you mend fences with? Like, should they reach out? Oh, I, I still talk to Karen and Ashley. Okay. They've great. They've been great support, um, support systems and they've been amazing. Um, so I see somebody in the comment section said basically to let it go. So for 19 weeks, 19 episodes, plus three reunions, that's 23 or yeah, let me do my math. 19, <laughs> 24, 23. I know I, I always do the math too. <laughs> for 22 episodes, I was dogged out. I was trashed. I was thrown under the bus. My truth was barely told. So if I want to keep going on a press tour for the next 22 weeks, I have the right to do that. So I'm not letting it go. Not until I feel as though I've been heard and I got my story out. I will keep going as long as I want to go, as long as I have the time, and I will keep riding this bus till the wheels fall off. Thank you very much. Do you think uh, it would be a mistake for Bravo to keep Candace for a future season? And if so, why? I, look, that's on them. I could care less. If they want to keep having a, a grown woman that throws temper tantrums on their show, that's on them. You know, if they think that's entertaining, then good for them. Andy teased that there's going to be two new wives potentially next season. Do you think that the cast needs a shakeup? Oh, they definitely need a shakeup. They definitely need a shakeup because they need people that can actually come with their own storyline. So you don't have the people who have nothing going on in their life trying to hijack other people's story to make themselves relevant. And how, how did you feel about the reunion? Because, you know, a lot of fans were saying, obviously, that they felt Andy was a little harder on you than he was on Candace. So how do you feel about that? And what's your response? I mean, it, it's absolutely true. He was a lot harder on me than he was on Candace. Um, it was expected, in my opinion. So I just handled it. You know, I've been taking ownership for my actions since the incident. But it was like, whenever I wanted to tell my side of what happened, Nobody wanted to hear it. You know, there was so much gaslighting that went on both in during the scenes and behind the scenes. There was so much for over a year. This went on. And it wasn't until the second part of the reunion when they actually showed the footage to back up everything I was saying that that was the first time anybody has ever made it clear that what I had been saying was what actually happened. And that was over a year later. Can you imagine you yeah. basically and several people well this is what I remember happened then you're watching the footage and you're like yeah this is what I said happened they're like no that didn't happen what are you doing it for over a year wow like what type of mental games are we trying to play with folks you know so yeah not it's, it's just not a, a, a cool situation yeah why do you think that it it maybe was a little bit easier on Candace than you why do you think that really was well, I'm not a person that can be controlled. If people tell me you need to do this in scene or, or if we want to hear this side of you or we're trying to paint you as a villain, but I'm not being I'm not going along with your plan. Um, I'm not a person that can be controlled. Um, people like her are and clearly, you know, they like people that they can use and manipulate and do whatever it is that they want to do so that they can fit their agenda for whatever storyline they're trying to tell. I'm not that chick. So I'm not the person that I want to keep around, I guess, um, if you're trying to have a specific agenda, because I'm not going to I'm not going to do what I don't what I don't feel comfortable doing. Yeah. So you, you did say you were offered a contract for next season. Um, you don't want to come back, obviously. So was it actually the lives that made you be like, I'm done? Um, because I think a lot of people would be surprised to hear you say, you know what? Yeah, I was going to sign up. I was going to come back. I was going to confront everybody. It was the way that it was edited for part three of the reunion. That was the tip of the iceberg for me. Like I said earlier, um, at the point where you're showing a response to something, you're not showing that something that we responded to. That's a problem. Um, especially when we were told that they were definitely going to show both lives. <laughs> like we literally were told, well, we can't show your response without showing what you responded to. So that wouldn't be fair. So yeah, we're going to show both lives. And I'm like, okay, good. That's fair. 
And then I watched the whole reunion and I'm like, wait, what? It's not there. <laughs> I was lied to. Um, so yeah, that was the tip of the iceberg for me. Do you think you'll watch next season? Because you know, your girls, Karen, Ashley, they are still on. Do, do you think you will tune in? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see when the time comes. Um, if the trailer looks interesting, I'll probably watch. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm at a place right now where I'm just in I don't care mode. And I just, I'm enjoying my peace. I'm enjoying the fact that I'm like, I'm able to just live and work on my businesses, be a mom, be a wife, and do the things that I enjoy without feeling like I have to rush my whole day to accommodate cameras. So I'm really enjoying this time right now. It's like, I just feel good. <laughs> good. Well, who do you think should be back and shouldn't be back next season? I think the only people that should be back are Karen and Ashley. <laughs> okay. okay. The only real chicks on the show. And then they need to just get a few more new people. Okay. Um, if Andy asked you and, and or Chris together to come on Watch What Happens Live, what would you say? I would say no thank you. Okay, okay. Well, let's talk about what you are working on right now. I know you have your essential oil line. You talk about your podcast. Obviously, mom, T'Challa, Hala. Talk to me about what you've got going on. Yes, so right now, the, the one of my really exciting projects outside of Mila Eve has been my Tea with Monique channel on YouTube. Ooh, and tea. We've been, yes, we've been doing um, panels every week with some of the best, YouTubers, bloggers, fan pages from different platforms like Instagram and, you know, and Twitter. And we just have like a great discussion. It started out really with a lot of questions for me, like a Q&A. Um, people just wanted to know what, what's going on. Tell us some, some tea that happened behind the scenes. But now we're getting into more of a conversational tone and just having great conversation, chatting it up, spilling a little tea, throwing a little shade. And it's actually really fun. And we do that every Wednesday on my Tea with Monique YouTube channel at 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, we have some special guests. Every week we have like four or sometimes even five uh, guests. Oh. And we have huge platforms as well. So it's nice. It's a safe space for all of us to just combine all of our uh, followers and people who adore each of us all in one spot and have a great conversation. So make sure you are subscribed to that. Um, we do Wind Down Wednesdays right after on my Not For Lazy Moms YouTube channel. So I, look, I'm about to just be a professional YouTuber at this point. 